Hi, my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Alliant Consulting. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a cool way to stay on the keyboard and make your users more efficient. So I was at the doctor's office with my daughter and I noticed that the nurse was entering data into their system and I was impressed at how quick it was and how she was within a notes field and she was able to just tab through it and enter data really quickly. So I took notes of what she was doing and decided to create a similar demo file. So in this record, I just have the data pre-populated, but let me make a new record and I'll show you what we get. So we have our regular fields, the visit date and the reason, and then we have this notes field with a bunch of brackets. The idea is that I can enter the visit date and the reason, and we'll say neck pain. And when I hit the tab key, I jump into the notes field. And if I hit the tab key again, it drops me to that empty bracket. And if I hit the tab again, it'll take me to the next one. And if I hit shift tab, which is the equivalent of tabbing but backwards, it takes me to the previous one. So now I can go in here and just fill this out. The patient complained about neck pain and shoulder pain. The patient showed signs of weakness. The following were examined. We'll say head, neck, and back. And the next visit will be... Now the nice thing about this bracket situation is that while it's structured, it also allows room for change. So let's say I don't know the next visit. So the next visit will be TBD. So I can go and clean up some of that, you know, remove that word on. I could add a bunch of more text. I could add paragraphs. I can pretty much do anything. So then again, I can hit that tab key and say slouching and then works in front of computer all day. So now when you look at it, it just looks like a normal record, but really it was pretty efficient for a nurse or a doctor to go in here and enter notes and just use the tab key to navigate. So let me make a new record just so we can see what came in to begin with. This is the auto enter part of the field, so that's why that's coming in automatically. And if we look at the script triggers on here, you'll see that there's this script trigger called notes jump to next blank. And by blank, I mean that next bracket that's available. So let's look at that script. So this script is responsible for deciding what should happen when the user is within that notes field. So the first question is, we need to see if the trigger keystroke is tab or not. So if they typed an A or a 1 or a 7 or a space or anything else, we're going to ignore that because we don't care, right? We're just going to allow them to type that in there. It's when they hit the tab key, which is the code of 9, that's when we care and that's when we need to pay attention. So we go to, into that notes field, and here I'm just allowing us to define what the marker is. So you could change it, right? It doesn't have to be this bracket. It could be asterisks, it could be a bunch of X's, it could be anything, something unique enough that a user wouldn't actually type. And then we figure out where the current location of the cursor is. The only reason I have this if else is because I need to know if the user hit the shift key when they hit the tab key, because if they do, then again, they're tabbing backwards versus if it's just the tab key, then we're tabbing forward. Let's just look at the forward one. These are just a little bit different from each other, but if we look at the start, basically I'm trying to calculate where I need to tab next. So I say the field is called data. We've got the marker, which is that bracket space bracket. And then we talk about the current location. So these are grabbed from those variables we set earlier. And then I just figure out the position. So find the position in the notes field for the bracket open bracket. And our starting location is going to be the current location plus one. Now the reason we do the plus one is if I'm on a bracket already and I want to tab to the next one, let's say I want to ignore that bracket for a little bit or I don't want to enter the data, I want to be able to move forward and I don't want to get stuck on that bracket. So by doing a plus one, I make sure that I'm not going to find the marker, which is bracket space bracket. So the plus one is just a way to allow me to scooch over just one character. So this is going to tell us the position of our next starting place. And then the direction is just to tell me whether or not I am moving forward or backward. The logic for the if statement where the user is holding down the shift key, that's where we're doing the exact same thing. So we're still looking at the notes field. We're using that marker and figuring out our current location. But the only difference is we're doing the current location minus one. And again, it's just the ability to be able to move away from the current position of the bracket space bracket and making sure that I can move to the previous one or the next one. With the position function, you can actually use negative numbers. Let's say that we're on the second occurrence of the bracket. By going backwards, we actually want to go to the previous one. So instead of doing a one, which is what we normally do, we're actually saying negative one, which is basically the equivalent of just going backwards. Then down here, we have the end variable, and we basically check to make sure that we have a number to start with. And the reason we add two is because it's the length of the marker, right? We have bracket space bracket, so we want to start at the first character, and then we want to end at two characters after that. So as long as our start is greater than zero, we're going to use this function called set selection. And set selection tells us what field do we want to go to, and then we get to say 
where we want to start and where we want to end. This function doesn't get used too often because it has to do with the cursor's position. And in most cases, as developers, we don't really mess with that. We let users jump around. The most that we do normally is, you know, allowing tabbing through fields. We're not necessarily worried about what a user will do within that field. But in this case, it's a great way of really navigating the user and letting them move through the field in a more efficient way and in a very structured way. So the only caveat here is that if the start was equal to zero, which means there were no more brackets to move through, then it just says, well, am I going backwards or forward? And depending on that, it's going to either go to the previous field or the next field. And this is a really important one, and that's the exit script with a result of false. I put a little note here to clarify what that meant, but basically once the user hits the tab key, we don't actually want them to tab outside of the field. If we didn't exit the script as false, then it would actually execute the tab command, which would mean that the user would actually tab out of the field. So the exit script is there as a way to say that the tab already did its job, and then we're done with the script. So we'll close that. So again, if I click in that notes field and I hit the tab key, there I am on the first bracket. If I hit it again, I can go to the next one. And again, if I shift tab, I can go backwards. I hope this is a technique that you can incorporate into your existing solutions or new solutions. It's not going to be a perfect solution for every database out there, but there are places where we want to structure the user a little bit, but still give them a lot of freedom. So I think this is a great way to get that done. Thank you for watching and please check out more of our videos at Salient TV and let us know if you have any ideas for other video topics. Thanks!